the do to select it shortcut is shift option, right? Option is a key that you hold anytime that you want to do something to all of something in your session. So that would be due to all. So if I just held option and change this, every single track in my session would change. But if I hold shift and option, that focuses the command on only the tracks that are selected. Hey, man, you want to know how to properly use buses and sub masters in your session? Well, let me show you something. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. And I got the way to do it by going to wavywayne.com and actually copying one of my recording and mixing templates that'll get you the sound that you want a whole lot faster and you can learn along the way. So go ahead and check out that website, wavywayne.com right now. And if you're new to the place, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. So this video is going to be a crucial tip on how to actually organize your session um, using a submaster and how to set those buses up in a Pro Tools session. Basically what a submaster is, is a track that you create in your session that helps you control the other a group of other tracks. Um, the reason why you might want to do that, typical submasters might include like a drum submaster, a vocal submaster. Um, you have them for your percussion, for different instruments in your session. You can create submasters for everything, an effect submaster. Now, the reason that you would want to do that is because let's say I got all my drums uh, processed the way I want to individually, but maybe I want to do some parallel compression over the entire drum group as a whole, that whole drum set as a whole. Well, having a drum submaster would allow me to do that let's say i was working with a group of background vocals and i got all those processed individually how i want to but overall i felt like all the background vocals were too bright or, or needed to be compressed a little more well i could do that instead of going to each individual track having a sub master would allow me to easily affect that whole group of tracks as well as you know doing all kind of stuff like panning volume automation whatever you can think of and when it comes to printing down stems that's that some masters make it easy to do that as well um and just stay organizing in your session so let me show you a, a quick little way of how i would do this in a session so Basically, what a submaster is going to be, typical use would be a stereo auxiliary input track. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple stereo aux input tracks right now. Let's actually go ahead and make three of them because if you see, I have my session organized in three different groups. I have my drums uh, categorized in purple, and then we just have a bunch of guitar tracks for this particular session. And then we got a couple of vocal tracks right here at the end. So I'm going to actually make three stereo submasters, one for the drums, one for my guitars, and one for my vocals. And the way I like to organize this is I actually like to have my submasters next to the groups, like right after whatever they are controlling. And um, that way, you know, you see all of my and my session kind of feeds from left to right to where all of these drums are feeding into this submaster. All the guitars will be feeding into this submaster. The vocals will be feeding into this submaster. So let's just go ahead and name them. I meant to put and then put box. Cool. The one way that you want to go ahead and set this up is to assign a bus as the input to the submaster track to the aux input track. So I'm just going to go ahead, choose any bus that's not being used. Bus nine and ten. And then I'm going to route the outputs of all my drums to that same bus. Now, one way to do this is to select all those tracks, click the first one, hold shift, click the last one. Now I have all my drum tracks selected and using the do to select it modifier um, is how I'm going to change all of these outputs at once. Because ultimately what I want to do is route the outputs of all of these drum tracks to that same bus so that their outputs are feeding out of here and through here, allowing me all of the processing and routing power of the submaster from this one track. So with all these tracks selected, the do to select it shortcut is shift option, right? Option is a key that you hold anytime that you want to do something to all of something in your session. So that would be due to all. So if I just held option and change this, every single track in my session would change. But if I hold shift and option, that focuses the command on only the tracks that are selected. So holding shift and option and going up to any one of these tracks and changing their output to bus nine and 10. 
will allow me to all route all of these tracks through to bus nine and ten. The next step in creating this submaster, it's going to be to actually name that bus. I like my buses to be named. So one way is to right click on that path and choose to rename. And we're just going to name that drums. And then the last step is to actually solo safe our submaster. Solo safe actually prevents the submaster track from being muted whenever one of the other tracks within that group are actually being soloed. So for example, if I wanted to focus on this kick and I soloed it, you can see right now that kick is playing, but since it is routed through a submaster and that submaster is not solo safe, every other track in the session is ultimately being muted. In order to solo safe a track, you just hold the command key on a Mac, it'll be controlled if you're on a PC, and click on that solo button. When it becomes dimmed out like that, that's when you know that the track is actually solo safe. So now, if I go ahead and play this, I can solo the kick individually, be able to work on that individually, and still hear it and have it uh, fed through my actual submaster. Let's go ahead and set this up for the guitars. But this time, instead of creating a bus first, what I'm going to do is a quicker method that um, is included in Pro Tools 10 and later that actually allows you to send directly to a track. So I'm just going to first start off by selecting those guitars, holding Shift and Option for my Do to Select It function, click on the Output Path, go to Track, and then we're going to go down to our Guitars track. When I click that, You'll notice that Pro Tools created a bus, named it with the same name as the actual track that it's being routed to, and assigned the output of all those tracks I had selected to that bus, and the input of my submaster has that same bus. Now, only thing I have to do is solo safe that track, and then I got my guitars. The vocals, I'm gonna do that the same way with the vocals. Select both of them, Shift Option, track box done cool so there's one more step in setting up a submaster and that's to basically set up a, a like a, a overall submaster for all the tracks in my session so that i can affect my entire session by doing any mix bus processing or any mastering processing adding limiters and all of that stuff now typically we might just think to just add a master fader to do this and this might be the fastest way but i don't really recommend using a master fader especially because uh you know, then one of the main reasons is that the processing on a master fader is post fader. So that means that let me just create a master real quick. That means that if I have a, a limiter or something on my master fader, let's just go with a maximum limiter. If I have a limiter on my master fader, right, watch what happens as I turn the level down of this master to say I was like I was doing a fade out. Right. You see that as I'm as I did that fade out, the no more level is actually going into the limiter. So that means that the actual level going into the inserts on a master fader come after the fader position, which can be problematic if you are using the master fader to do fade outs of your entire song. That means that as you're doing that fade out, your compression levels and other processors are not going to be getting the same level of audio during that fade out. So that's why I recommend using a actual uh, sub master as an aux input track, and that'll give you a lot more uh, greater control. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new stereo aux input track, and I like to call this my mix bus. And then on my actual input to the mix bus, um, we can just actually do the same thing. I'll just actually go ahead and select all of the individual sub masters this time. So instead of those being routed out to the main output, they're now going to be fed through the mix bus. And now that those three are selected, I'm going to hold shift option, click on the output path and route over to this track, my mix bus. That'll create the bus for me. And this does a point one just because there was already a bus name mix bus. So cool. And then we're going to solo save this. And now I can do my whole mix and process it here and then maybe even change that color so I don't get confused with my other submasters. And this is probably where an actual master fader could be useful. So if I actually created a master fader here, 
right now and I like to put it in position in between uh, you know the tracks and the mix bus and what I'll do instead of having this master fader monitor the main output I'll have this master fader set to monitor the actual mix bus and what that will allow me to do is control the levels before they actually get to my mix bus processor um, and, and also monitor the levels in case anything is clipping or distorting on that bus path having a master fader over the bus actually helps me to control and monitor that bus level. I hope you found this video tutorial to be helpful. If you want more in-depth knowledge about the software of Pro Tools and actually have the chance to get certified as a Pro Tools user through Avid, taught by me, your boy Wavy, check out my website, wavywayne.com. I have a full Pro Tools certification course up right now that can teach you all the tips and tricks, the insides, um, of the Pro Tools software so you can become a better engineer, all right? Thanks for watching this video. I'm Wavy Wayne. Be dope. Thank you.